<laughs> I just realized I can't read the chat now. I can't read. I was like, I don't need my glasses on. I, I don't need to read notes for this one. And then I was like, right, there's a chat and I don't have contacts. It happens? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm looking at I'm looking into LASIK. Looking Are you near sighted or far sighted? Near sighted. So that does LASIK work with that? Should. It's the astigmatism they can't fix, but Got it. you know, I d I don't it doesn't bother me that I like I, I would wear glasses at night to fix the astigmatism. Fair. But I just would like to not have to wear glasses to read all the time. Fair. You're not a contacts guy? I have just never tried. Fair. I keep... I don't like the Dude, idea it either. it took me six months to fill out the survey for ADD. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> According to my psychiatrist, that was not a... Oh, and there we go. That happened. The boy sat on the cord. Of course he did. <laughs> Do you want to fix that? Yeah. Archie, Archie. come here, buddy. This is a great start to the show, right, guys? It's going good. Oh, boy. Wow, 99 episodes. You'd think we'd be more you'd professional, think, right? right? I think this is more professional than the first ones were. Look at it. We got we got overlays and... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's far better. Yeah, it's, it's better than the first, like, 50. Yeah, sheesh. Uh, I remember those days. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, Howdy. Once again, have to advertise our coffee because we're drinking it. Correct. Um, you know, get get our coffee from Tableau Roasting Company. Um, also, we are in a competition right now with Stakuyi with his channel. Yes. Um, he also has a coffee through the same company, Tableau. And uh, Archie, you're in a really inconvenient location. Uh, Isn't he always? <laughs> we're trying to get to 72 orders first. So if you go to Tableau Roasting Company, the link is in the description. You will see that there is a bundle that has coffee from us and it has coffee from Stakuyi. Um, whoever wins, we will be drawing a name from our orders. So when you order, what you want to do is order one, tell them that you got it, that you're from the Lore Lodge. And then the winner, uh, whether I win, whether we win or whether Stakuyi wins, one of our people will get a free extra bag of coffee. So you have a chance to double your, well, not double, up your coffee by 50%. Sorry, um, buddy. <laughs> Didn't mean to step on you. So, yes, coffee delicious i'm trying to actually advertise at the beginning of shows again because i know people do that hope you guys don't mind yeah but there we go with that said let's get into today's topics yes we're gonna be talking about two things one of them is Stephen kabaki obviously i'm gonna say off the bat i have not yet had a chance to watch missing enigma's interview with him i also was not aware that missing enigma was making a video <laughs> um, like what incredible time yeah, we, uh, some people were in the comments on it basically going, you know, oh, did you guys just copy, you know, you, you guys just copy everything? And I'm like, uh -huh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but they were like, you know, Missing Enigma just put a video out on this and, you know, now you guys are too. I'm like, dude, we shot this on the 2nd of July. Yeah. I did the research for it the week prior. I had no idea. I totally respect Missing Enigma as a content creator and I think he does great work, but like... Yeah. We're not copying. <laughs> we we may put out a video every week, but it takes yeah. longer than a week to do those videos. It's usually it's yeah. at least two weeks in advance. Plus, there are some things where you start researching yeah. like months in advance. Boy in the Box took I think a month and a half. Yeah. Um, Let's leave that on. We I actually I remember us having to like do other stuff and postpone things to get Boy in the Box done. But yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't had a chance to watch that one. But you know, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend going to watch Missing Enigma. He's great. Uh, he does good work. He's there have been times where We've missed stuff that he did not miss, and I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> cool, someone got it. I can work that in in the future when I have to talk about this. Yeah. Because that's kind of become the thing is, like, as we do more and more of these in the way we're doing them, I'm having more and more stuff that when I go and I talk about a new case, I'm able to connect, like, all right, this is kind of similar to what happened here, 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 and here. Yeah. Can connect the dots a lot more, and I'm starting to see some of the reasons that Politis has the opinions he has, as well as some of the reasons that people have bad opinions of Politis. Because there are certainly things that recur over and over again that he's right about. And mm -hmm. then there are other things where I'm like, this, you're drawing connections that shouldn't be there. Yeah. I'm um, like, this is not as similar to this as you suggested it was. The theory is leading the evidence, not the other way exactly. around. Exactly. So, you know, Politis, I think, is a very good, very good source, great worker, uh, very important for getting interested in things. I think Missing Enigma does a phenomenal job of debunking things. So it's it's good to have people in both camps mm -hmm. so that you can bounce off of one another. Yeah. I think that's a very important thing for dialogue, for discussion, for moving things forward. Um, it's why I'm so glad that we were to have that conversation with uh, Andreas. Because, mm. yeah. you know, we obviously, we I would love to have Mind Unveiled on. He refused. So instead of having him, we went and we found somebody else. And that person was able to come on the show and give a great account of themselves. Be very well spoken, very kind, very civil, and 
you know, it, it went great. fine. It was yeah. great. I love having people on this show who disagree with us because mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to talk. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, we've got we've got some people that I've been talking to lined up. We're gonna have a few Freemasons come on um, to talk about the very varying types of Freemasonry, like differences between Scottish and York Rite, what the craft degrees are, sort of like the verifiable history versus the tradition. That's yep. gonna be a fun one. That'll be soon. Nice. Um, yeah, we got a couple other people that I'm I'm talking to about coming on as well. So Sweet. we're gonna be getting back to more more guests. Um, and so you know, in doing the Stephen Kabaki one, that was an interesting moment where like. This kind of weird thing happened. I, uh, from what I understand, Mr. Gabaki is writing a book, and it's a book about his experience, and that he he says he remembers now is my understanding. Oh, really? So I'm I'm looking forward to going to watch that. Yeah. But I don't know. But my my suggestion to you is obviously we weren't able to get it into our video in time. So definitely, like I'm telling you all right now in this one go watch the Missing Enigmas video because it's probably going to tell you stuff we weren't able to. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to talk too in-depth about Stephen Kabaki tonight. We are going to go over the story and some of the theories, the opinions, but I just want you guys to know that I'm not trying to steal any thunder. I'm not trying to act like we know more than anybody else because we, we don't necessarily. Yeah. So um, wanted to get that out of the way. Obviously, the timing here was just kind of weird, but I want to make sure you guys understood where we were coming from as we do this show. To... To get into the, I'm going to do Stephen first, actually, since we're here. Right, um, to well. get to get into the details about Stephen Kabaki, February 1978. Stephen is a college student. He is a senior, 23 years old. He is about to finish his degree. He has nine credits left. That is three classes. Having been at the end of a history program, that is like the best time of your life. That is, you you are done. <laughs> um, I just realized when you said he was 23 years old, I was like, oh my. Oh. Oh, I'm not 23 anymore. Oh, yeah, that's something we should say. Uh, somebody turned 25 yesterday. Everybody say happy birthday to Aiden, because he's a year older now. Preemptively, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny. It's crazy how much, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but it's crazy how much I feel like I've grown up in my 20s. Yeah. It's like I reached 23 and I was like, oh, I had consciousness, but now I'm actually awake. And now I, like, am learning things. Yeah. And it's great. And you know what? Looking looking back at it and thinking about it, the suggestions that Stephen may have disappeared on purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't want to make any accusations about it now that he's come out, you know, told his story from his perspective. I can yeah. I can just say like, you know, because there's an actual definitive answer out there now. I can say like what I was thinking while researching, which was, you know, I mean I personally, in a situation where, like, my dad was handing my house over, the house over to me, I had yeah. a girlfriend, I had a job lined up, I wouldn't necessarily be in the position to be like, eh, I think I'm going to run away for a year. But I can understand why somebody might be, why someone might, you know, think, okay, um, let's, let's maybe take a year and disappear for a little bit. Yep. And in 1978, it was a hell of a lot easier to do that. Oh wow, yeah. I mean, imagine trying to. Neither one of us could disappear today. No, not for even even if we weren't even doing if we this. weren't doing this. Yeah. it would be impossible for you and I to just disappear. Yeah, because credit card transactions, I IDs, Easy Pass, like everything in the world. Oh, that reminds me. I need to get the transponder. Yeah, so it's it's very difficult to disappear now. It's not that difficult to disappear in 1978. What is difficult to do is to. It's 1978. And it's February, and you've skied six miles from your apartment to the side of Lake Michigan, and you've taken off your skis and taken off your backpack and set them on the lakeside, and then you've walked 200 yards onto the ice. It's very difficult to vanish from that ice without going through the lake. And it seems like that's what Stephen did. So that's one of the things that I think with this case really fascinated so many people, had so many people going, wait, something's weird here. You think he went through the ice? No, I don't know what happened to him. And, uh, I have, and, and now that he's, you know, kind of out there and has said yeah. what happened to him, I can't say for certain. What we can say is that in 1979, he told reporters that he remembers feeling cold and scared on the ice. Yeah. I have no idea what happened to Stephen Kabaki. What I do know is that it inspired a whole bunch of conversations about things like portals and about theoretical physics and traditions and religions and that's kind of the angle i i wanted to talk about because when you look at at kind of who stephen was he was a history major 
He was mm-hmm. interested in psychology. This is a guy who probably, he, he may have been aware of fugue states even. Mm. I do wonder, I do wonder if Stephen thought to himself, I can, I can do this and there are a number of different ways I can explain it a year from now. Yeah. Maybe he didn't intend to go away for a year. Maybe he only intended to go away for a few months. I don't know. And again, haven't had a chance to watch the video. I'm trying not to speculate too much and trying to still talk about the case while not, you know, saying things that might be certainly untrue. But I remember reading about it and thinking, you know, this is this is not the only time that I've come across a story of somebody disappearing for a while and then reappearing elsewhere. Yeah. With either amnesia or a new set of skills or the fact that, you know, maybe Steven didn't actually forget what happened to him. I have a very particular set of skills. Exactly. Maybe... maybe. Maybe it started as a few state and he woke up. Or when I think about how do you disappear from the middle of a lake? How? Like. Boat? It's I mean, a frozen depends, lake. Well, I was going to say it depends on how. Oh, frozen it was frozen, it, frozen, frozen. Frozen, frozen? Lake Michigan, when it freezes, it's. And this is the other thing that's puzzling to me. He has to have known that was dangerous. And yet, both his roommate and his brother said that this is something he would do. However, his brother says he would never leave his stuff behind like that. His roommate yeah. didn't seem to have an opinion of that. What happened? I can't, th- <laughs> I can't think of anything that wouldn't also leave tracks or was just so... Yeah, JD, I was going to say, like, helicopter would be so unrealistic in terms of, like, mm-hmm. I don't know what his resources were. Yeah. But in the 70s... Mm-hmm. Having someone you know or chartering a helicopter to pick you up in the middle of Lake Michigan seems, A, pretty conspicuous. Yeah. And, B, really logistically difficult, even if you have the resources to do that. Yeah. So, you know, it, again, trying very difficult, trying very hard not to not to make assumptions about anything here. Well, I, I do, want, my understanding is that the Missing Enigmas video, like his video, not the interview, suggested yeah. that steven deliberately disappeared yeah and this entire time what's what's i think where i'm struggling is like i was looking at it from the angle of i don't want to call this man a liar fair well but but (laughs) if if you take that theory and explore it yeah and acknowledge like we don't know this is certain but like if in that scenario somebody did that intentionally Mm -hmm. you can i feel like we can explore it and in my mindset it's like yeah if you've got everything lined up for yourself and particularly if you're in that position where you feel like you everything's been lined up for you and you haven't had any choice in it Mm -hmm. To make a conscious decision, or sometimes even an unconscious decision, if it really was a fugue state, or started out as a fugue state and he decided to roll with mm-hmm. it, it's totally understandable that it's like, I just want to do something that's yeah. like my own for a little while. Which is, you know, I mean, I we, don't, we don't know if that's what happened. It's probably unlikely that it was, yeah. but I think it's understandable. It's, uh, it's... It's difficult because I, I I wish that the I, I wish that the interview had come out before we did the video. Yeah. Um. Because that way I could have looked at him and be like, all right, well, what do his own words say? And to be honest, I've used Missing Enigma before because he's a good researcher. So mm-hmm. there's been times where he's gotten his hands on documents that he's shown in the videos where I've been like, oh, awesome. Yeah. Like for uh for Aaron Hedges, he like Missing Enigma was an instrumental help for the Aaron Hedges case. Um, because he had access to police reports that I just couldn't get. Mm. So, in his video, and I even said, I think, in the description on that video, like, you know, Missing Enigma was helpful for this. You know, go check his video on it, on yeah. it too. Um, you know, I, again, I want to be very clear that I fully support people watching him. Uh, I'm not at all trying to steal his thunder or to bad Malcolm. I know we're bigger than he is now. Yeah. Um, so, I don't want to make it into a weird thing. Um, and I, I will be watching the interview, and I'll probably post a link to the interview on the channel when I, when I get a chance to. Um but looking at it, you know, investigating it from the and, and I think what I what I'm trying to say here is investigating this from the standpoint of somebody who was trying to assume nobody lied really does kind of change the the way I'm look I do things. Cause now that I'm kind of hearing, okay, there's evidence it was deliberate, I have different opinions yeah. on what's important. Uh and that was an interesting introspection onto my own research habits that Oh, when I'm ex- when I'm willing to accept that somebody's being dishonest here, I I explore different avenues. Yeah. Um. So I had it a little bit with the Aaron Hedges case where I was like, okay, maybe his buddies weren't telling the truth. 
a little bit with the Tom Messick case. Now it's definitely kicking me into a different gear where I'm I'm approaching all of these from now on. If there's a chance they disappeared on purpose, I'm going to take that a lot more seriously. Yeah. Because in the past, I've kind of been willing to say, all right, well, the police said they don't think it was on purpose. So, you know what? Given the, the other circumstances, it seems unlikely. Now I'm going to try and prove that it might have been on purpose. It's just a different way of doing things. Fair. Um, you know, because I just think that that's the best way to do it. So... I, I am a little sad that it seems that it may have been deliberate because that would make more sense because then maybe he did walk 200 yards out and walk 200 yards back through his own footprints. All right. Now we have an explanation for how he went missing from the middle of the lake. And then, okay, well, how did he show up back home? Well, he knew where home was. Why does he have something from California? He probably hitchhiked and probably got there and ran a race in California. He had a shirt from Marathon, Wisconsin, which either was a marathon in Wisconsin or Marathon, Wisconsin, the town. All of the reporting suggests it was a marathon in Wisconsin. Yeah. So I I, I have no idea for certain. But that makes it kind of lame because I was really hoping it was portals. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I could finally say, look, guys, it's the portals. Well, you know, we never did a video on that I think would be fun. Oh, the orbs. We haven't the done a video. Orbs. Remember the orbs from Skinwalker Ranch? Yes. We the never Skinwalker did... orbs. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't done one on And I also par partially want to do it just so I can put I... in a full screen image of the pondering the orb yeah. meme. I, I think I think we've It's time to revisit the really old video on other worlds that we did from like mm. early from mm -hmm. early on the channel. Yeah. I uh, so I think it's just time to go back and do a video on the concept of multiple dimensions in folklore. Yeah. And if you want to you know, try and take a look at the science stuff, go for it. Because sure. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, yes, these are words in a language I don't read. And then it's like, this is English. And I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not old enough for me to get it. Exactly. I'm like, this is, this is too new. Yeah, yeah, Give yeah. me the archaic. <laughs> Can you can you put these Greco Roman these Greco Latin terms into uh, their Germanic counterparts? Yeah. <laughs> I've like, never seen God. What is it? The uh, there's a there's a it's something about atoms, but it's written in English entirely derived from Germanic. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find it really quick. Um, let's see. I uh, I uh, and it's so it's yeah essay on i'm assuming it's kind of giving credence to the idea that any modern technology Germanic. would be considered witchcraft to people of old essentially yeah because they didn't have the words or the context to describe it uncleftish beholding here we what? go yeah want to screen share this uh sure i think i can do that um where where is the which button do we usually use for that uh, yes yeah usually all right that's official we're switching to obs <laughs> um, we are switching to obs i give up um yeah so anyway we're gonna go read through this again and i guess edit it out of uh for the recorded, recorded one, yeah. version um okay so the idea here obviously is this one is a discussion of atomic theory that shows what english would look like if it were purged of its non-germanic words for most of its being mankind did not know what things are made of but could only guess with the growth of worldkin, we began to learn, and today we have a beholding of stuff and work that watching bears out, both in the workstead and in daily life. The underlying kinds of stuff are the first stuffs, which link together in sundry ways to give rise to the rest. Formerly, we knew of 92 first stuffs, from water stuff, the lightest and barest, to emir stuff, the heaviest. Now we have made more, such as agir stuff and hell stuff. Uh, and then this one is using only words of Greek origin. I eulogize the archons of pan-ethnic pan numismatic thesaurus and the ecumenical trapeza for the orthodoxy of their axioms, methods, and policies, although there is an episode of cacophony of the trapeza with Ellis. With enthusiasm, we dialogue and synagize, synaga, synaga, synagonize at the synods of our didemus organizations in which polymorphous economic ideas and dogmas are analyzed and th synthesized. Our critical problems such as the numismatic plethora generate some agony and melancholy. This phenomenon is characteristic of our epic. So it's like, <laughs> it's wild to read English in the, uh, basically taking out all of that stuff, all, all the, the Latin and the Greek. Um, but I just thought this was really interesting to, to pull up um, as a, in, you know, in talking about some of the, 
the way science works. Because well, imagine trying to imagine if you had to take chemistry with this. Yeah. Well, it also it makes a lot of sense in terms of like when what time period would this type of English have been in existence or proliferation? What was that? What time period would this type of English have existed? Ne this never existed. No. Nope. There was, uh, let me switch it back to us really quick. Um, so yeah, there was never a, a period of English history where English looked like that. Well, technically, English looks like that now. Because all of those words exist in modern English. You could speak and write English like this and it would be correct. Fair. Grammatically. And so what were the words that... That's the thing is you go back to... I'm, here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull up another one for you. Uh... Because, like, when it was saying, like, same stuff and things like that, what was that referring to specifically? Those are just the, so, uh, materials yeah. uh, would probably be the word used. Mm -hmm. Stuff. <laughs> because one's Greco-Latin yeah, and, and one's, one's Germanic. Germanic. So, uh, so here I've got pulled up um, the same idea. Ah, uh, 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 my voice works. Cool. So, for this one... Uh, this is Old English. This is what English looked like before uh, the French invaded. Yeah. Uh, well, before the Danes, technically. Quait, we gardena in Gerdagum, Theod Kaninga, Frim Gefrunen, Who the Ethlings Ellen Fremadon, Oft skilled skeffing, Skethena Thretum, Monegum Methum, Meodesetla Ofte, Egosod Eorlas. Uh, Sithen eris verd, fesket funden, he this frofregaba. So, that's English a long time ago. What, uh, what time, what, like, year is? Uh, this would be, like, 8th century English. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, right here. But you can start to see some things. Like, right here, fate with God caning. That was good. That was a good king, is what ah, this means. Ah, interesting. That was good. This that was good kenning, or kenning, depending on the pronunciation. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so I just think this is really cool. Um, Beowulf's a cool one to read in Old English because you can. It, it's fun to read through it and be like, all right, I can I can only understand some of this, but then you start to get into uh, like uh, Chaucer in Middle English. So here's the here's Chaucer. Which is, I want to say, the twelfth century. I think that sounds roughly right. Um, so when that April, when that April with his sources sought, uh, the drought of March hath pierced to the root and bathed every vine in switch in uh, probably sweet liquor, of which thereto engendered is the flower, of which whereto engendered is the flower. So you can. This is when you have started i believe this would be when french starts to get involved got it um if i'm remembering correctly but yeah so you can see how the language has really evolved over time it's kind of crazy how it's all technically the same language yep. and how much it's changed over hundreds and hundreds of years yeah i, I like and it's i, I love the little stuff because like you know you know what the, how in german eggs is iron why do you know okay well in german <laughs> eggs is iron yeah the reason it's eggs in English is because the Danes invaded. <laughs> like the That's Danes brought terrible. technically the Danes brought eggs to England in that they brought the word eggs. Yeah, that's hilarious actually. No, it's like ega. But, you know, that's I just wanted to wanted to kind of go off on my little history nerd tangent for a little while. I don't even know how we got here, but I think we're talking about other worlds and stuff like that. Yes. Um, but you know, in the, in the other world tales, the part of the reason that I was like, this doesn't match, um, you know, aside from the lack of scientific evidence was in most of the stories about people going to the Celtic other world, they mm -hmm. come back with knowledge. They, they do not have amnesia. Same thing with Yggdrasil mm -hmm. and the Norse. Yeah. Now, in the Norse one, it's not as specific as you must travel across the Western Sea. It's not as specific as you must go through this hole in the ground. It's people go across an ocean or through a dark forest or over the Bifrost, like yeah. something like that. It's a little, a little different, but it also, those traditions were kind of lost. Yeah, it's fair. Earlier than they were translated. I'm going to so, say also just as like a, a minor tangent. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, of all the things we've ever covered, by far, Yggdrasil is my favorite word that we have ever, <laughs> like, just if, if we had a glossary of terms for the mm -hmm. Lore Lodge, my favorite, Yggdrasil. Easily. Good word. I just, I want more excuses to be able to say it. Good anyway. word. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I wanted to say about, about the Stephen Kabaki situation. It's, it's hard to do the, the pod because I don't want to sit here and be like, ah, you know, here's what we thought three days ago. Um, cause I haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, yep, uh, yeah. which I wanted so badly to do today and I just did not have time. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, with that said, I want to, I want to talk about something else too. That's very important, which is that I saw the sound of freedom last week. And all of you should also go see The Sound of Freedom. Um, sorry, Sound of Freedom is the name of the movie. Yep. Uh, I I walked into that theater as somebody who talks about trafficking, missing persons, uh, murder, all of these wonderful, cheery things, day in and day out. I spend every week, you know, my nose buried into books about just some of the worst things to ever happen to people. And I sat there in that theater stunned like that. That is, that is the, the effect the movie has. Um, and, and for those who don't know, it's the, the story of it's based on the story of Tim Ballard, who was a, a federal agent who started an organization to rescue children from trafficking. And we're going to be doing a, a video on it very soon where I'm going to kind of go into the whole deep story and check the facts and everything because one of the biggest controversies that's come out of this movie is people who are insisting that it is some sort of QAnon conspiracy nonsense. If you go see the movie, I don't care. Tim Ballard could be Q himself. The message of the movie is still important. Yeah. Like, it's wild to me. And we talked about it on Pop Culture Crisis when I was on there uh, a month ago, how, you know, the Disney, base, uh, this movie was basically made with under Fox, and then Fox was acquired by Disney. So the plan all along was to release this movie under Fox. Yeah. It would have been Fox Home Entertainment, 20th Century Fox, like, you know, Disney's name would never have been on it, aside from the fact that Disney owned Fox, the network. Yeah. Disney acquires it in 2019. The movie was finished in 2018, slated for a 2019 release. Disney acquires it. Disney proceeds to not release the movie. Not only do they not release the movie, but they actually fight to keep the rights for as long as possible to prevent anybody else from releasing the movie. Now, I am not saying that there is not a single possible reason for Disney to choose to shelve this movie. Because there are a few. They're weak, but you could theoretically justify them from a business standpoint. There is nothing that justifies fighting to keep the rights if you don't intend to release the movie. Hmm. So, um, what one thing that was suggested was, oh, well, they can write it off as a loss on their taxes. No, they can't. The movie was finished in 2018 before they bought it. Yep. And they didn't buy the movie. They bought Fox. And they could have sold the rights to exactly. the movie. So that way a different studio could release it. Exactly. So, I look at the movie, and, and you know, I, I'm not going to spoil any details, because I really do want people to go see it. It is such an important movie. Um whether you agree with the beliefs of the guy that it's about or the beliefs of the actor. I know the Mormons did some funding for it. Like if it, 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 ignore all of that, because yeah. none of it actually matters when you look at the content of the film. And I can tell looking all, looking at all of the journalism on it, that is anti this movie, how badly they don't just want you to go see the movie in context. They want you to not see the movie mm -hmm. and it's, you can go see the movie for free. Yeah. Like, here, here's the thing. It's it's not just, hey, don't give money to these people. No, I myself personally dropped $525 to buy 35 tickets for people to go see the movie. Yep. I am sure a lot of other people are doing the exact same thing. Did they hit their goal? I don't know. I believe so. They it was they, they made like $10.8 million. Oh, so they on, absolutely hit their goal. Though. On July 4th. Yeah. For context, their goal was $2 million in the first week. I think it was $2 million people. Okay. In the theaters in the first week. But... 10 million on the first day suggests that yeah they, they got those 2 million goal, people. Yeah. Um so so what I wanted to talk about with the movie is is kind of that angle of it which is I have seen the movie. I am telling you guys there is not a single thing in there that's going to make you go wait a second. 
that's a like a, a QAnon conspiracy theory. That's like yeah. right wing propaganda. Yeah. There's nothing in the movie that makes you think that. Not once. It does not talk about Democrats. It does not talk about Republicans. It does not talk about Christians. It does not talk about atheists. Well, it does talk about Christians, but not in that context. Yeah. Um, it's just that the main character is a Mormon. So, like, God comes up. Yeah. Uh, another character is Christian, and God comes up in conversation, but the conversation is about, like, motivation. Like, you know, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. And it's basically like, you know, I feel like this is my path. Yeah. Like, this is what God wants for me. This is the right thing to do. Um, so that's, that's, that's the only extent to which religion is involved in the movie. And I hope in saying this, that I can really tell you guys all this, that some Rolling Stone is trying to prevent you from seeing this movie. The Guardian is trying to prevent you from seeing this movie. And like the Guardian's a UK organization. I'm not even sure it's in theaters in the UK. Probably not. So when I look at this, what I see is... I'm, I, this is not, I, I think it, what's frustrating is this is a movie where the the reporting that is attacking it is telling you don't see it. It's not telling you see it with this in mind. Mm -hmm. It's telling you don't even go see the movie. And I cannot think of a single good reason for that, especially when you can get tickets for free. You can get tickets for this film without supporting the movie. You can watch this online. You don't even have to go to a theater. Yeah, did, no, I, I would recommend going to a theater personally. Weren't they planning to? I don't know if they have yet, but were they planning to release it on Twitter? I believe that is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to, to give you guys the gist, it it can be seen as kind of glorifying Tim Ballard. That's fair. Because he is the main character. But it's also the only thing about Tim that it's glorifying is that he did these things for these kids. Yeah. Now, from what I understand, some of the details were changed a little bit, but the details of the movie are not the important part of the movie. Because I watched it and I was like, this entire story could be made up. From what I understand. Aside from the fact that those kids are in fact in those situations, yeah. which they are. There is no, no discussion, no debate. There are children around the world in this situation, and even one is too many. Yep. So I don't care if he said it's one to two million and it's actually 500,000. That's still too many. Why are you telling people they don't need to care about this? Yeah. Like, also, the, the main change that they made was they focused on one individual rather than... Uh, there, there's an element to the story where there's a, you know, a save or whatever. Because mm -hmm. um, the whole... This isn't a... a, a Spoiler. No. The the movie is about trying to rescue this one girl. Yeah. The the reality was is that And in general actually, trying to fight against yes. trafficking, but it follows the story of this one specific kid. Yes, but the, the true story was actually over a hundred people that were involved in that rescue yeah. operation attempt. Uh but they had to narrow it down because their budget was too small. Yeah. They were I, able to do that. I'm I'm not clear on the details yet, but that is also my understanding is like yeah. that they basically basically that they they took elements of what happened and crafted a narrative yep. out of those elements so you don't have necessarily a faithful point for point fact for fact which no reproduction ever is. yeah no what you have it, it think like dunkirk yeah it's that kind of it, it is that kind of based on true events it's yep. like these things didn't necessarily all happen at exactly the same time yeah but in order for this movie to work they need to that's uh, the difference between fact and truth. Exactly. Is that the, the truth of the story is still the same, even if some of the facts don't, don't line up exactly. Yeah. So it's, it gets you to a point where you're, when you watch the movie, you come away from it not going, oh my God, you know, the billionaires are evil. You don't come away from it going, oh my God, the choose a religious group is evil. Yeah. The Republicans, the Democrats, the, the Illuminati, it's nothing of that sense. You come away from it with the thought, I cannot believe there are this many kids going through this, and I cannot believe I didn't know about it earlier. Yeah. Because for, for me, like, I knew, and, and it wasn't for me, it wasn't that I didn't know, because, yeah, I knew that number. Yeah. I knew that one million kids worldwide is conservative, that it's probably more. Yeah. There's eight billion people on Earth. <laughs> like, what I, what, where the disconnect for me was, was like, I know this is happening. I had never had somebody present to me in such a visceral way how it's happening. 
and what it looks like. Yeah. And what these people go through, the tactics that are used, like, the the way that the people doing it behave. Just the sheer, like, because when you watch it, it's the people doing this are not sociopaths. And I went back and I've, I've also looked into some of the other cases of people who have been caught who were pedophiles. They're not, it's not a thing where you're dealing with people who are um, unable to feel emotions. So they don't understand right and wrong. These are people who get happy. They get sad. They get scared. They consider other people's emotions. They consider their own emotions. And they choose to continue doing these things anyway. And that, I think, is, is the important part and the reason the movie matters, regardless of the beliefs of the people who made it, regardless of the beliefs of the people who it's about. What is important about the movie is this is a film that shows the average person who doesn't think about this every day the horrifying truth of what is happening to, you know, thousands of people per day. Yeah. And there, there's one line in it, which is, I... Uh, God, it's um, it's pretty pretty dark, but you can sell a bag of cocaine once. You can sell a child five or six times a day, which that that line, like thinking about that, the fact that yes, it is, if not the largest or the fastest growing illicit industry in the world, it is one of them. Um, this like the 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 drug and gun trades pale in comparison to how horrible this is to, to what like an uh, to a to the level of evil that we're dealing with here i was just uh, to clarify i haven't seen the movie yet i've seen a couple interviews i haven't seen it uh haven't heard about that line yet yeah the amount of heat that just started to generate in my body from just hearing that line alone mm -hmm. like that angers me on a visceral level yeah and it's you know, I don't, I'm, my goal here is not to feed you a conspiracy. It's not to tell you, oh my God, they're out there. They're coming yeah. for your kids. It's not that. I'm not saying that there's even any one group of people responsible for this. It's just that it is happening. There are people responsible for it. And you know what? You should be aware of it. Because the fact of the matter is, there is nothing you as an individual can do. There's almost nothing I as an individual can do except sit here and tell you about it. And uh, there's a, a special message at the end where Jim Caviezel says, you know, the storytellers have the power, and that really resonated with me. Um, it's why we're talking about this right now. But, you know, I, I want to I be very clear that I think that there are people out there who are taking this and immediately applying, you know, like, well, we all know who they are, right? Stop. Stop it. You're not helping. All you're doing is making it easier for the people who do want this to be swept under the rug to call it an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory or some stupid shit like that. So if you're inclined to say, oh, well, you know, it's them. Don't. Keep it to yourself. It's not that hard. Like, it's a stupid opinion already. Don't infect the rest of us with it. Like, that, you know, that bugs me. I just, I want to make that clear. You know, like, don't, this is not an... This is not an invitation for people to come along and be like, you know, oh, well, it's the Jews or like, n no. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's not the Jews. It's people of all races, all religions, all countries, all backgrounds, varying degrees of wealth who are all doing evil things. And if you just focus on one group, whether they're doing it or not, you are missing all the other groups. You have now created a situation where everyone's focused on one thing and all everyone's got tunnel vision. Like, it's it's not one group. Nobody, no single collective group of people here are the bad guys. There are evil individuals out there doing evil things. And what's very clear from the media right now is that some of those evil people are really fucking powerful. Like, really powerful. And I'm sure that they vote both directions. I'm sure they fund both directions. I'm sure that they have a diverse set of religious beliefs. If they have any at all, because honestly, if I were one of these people, I don't think I could live with myself knowing there's an afterlife. Um, like, so... Also, with that in mind, we just want to remind everybody that we're pretty happy with our lives. We would never do yeah. anything that <laughs> prematurely uh, yep. cause any harm to ourselves or any other one. Because mm -hmm. uh, we just want to make the world a better place and do that in the most positive way yep. and end as much suffering as possible. Mm-hmm. And also to anybody who's going to try and take this and, and discredit it as calling us like conservative or something, I completely condemn the people who broke into the Capitol on January 6, 2021. I think that was an extraordinarily inappropriate thing to do, and anybody who broke the law that day should be punished. 
Um, Agreed. You know, and, and I want to be clear, anybody who broke the law that day should be punished. Does not mean everybody there. It just means the people who actually did something wrong. Yes. Um, you know, the same thing goes for, for most of the other stuff that I know detractors are going to try and say to, to try and discredit this, because I'm already ready for the shitstorm. I know yeah. it's coming. Um, but my point in saying this is, like, this is not coming from a place of we're trying to convince you that the lizard people are running everything. We're just trying to point out to you that, yes, there is a problem with child sex trafficking. That is an issue. It needs to be addressed. We need to deal with it. And just like Agamemnon's gym bag just said, if you think Epstein was the only one, you are naive. So thank you for that, because that is a great point. Um, so, you know, I, I wanted to give a, a little spiel, a little diatribe on that, because I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, because I haven't looked into it yet, Jim Caviezel could be entirely down the QAnon train. Uh, Tim Ballard could be the chief of the Mormon church. He could be in charge. I would not care because the movie is trying to raise awareness. The point is not to make anybody the good guy. It's not to make anybody the bad guy. It's to tell you, hey, this thing's happening. You should care. And you know what? I do. I do care. So I think that's fair. Um, you know, that's that video is going to be coming out sometime either it's either going to be next week's it's either going to be this it's either going to be next friday's video or the following friday's video i'm not sure yet which it's going to be it depends on you know what i what i determine tomorrow as i'm doing some research but i wanted to really lay that out there say it because i do think it's an important movie i do think it's an important thing to care about and if you can't bring yourself to watch that version of it if you can't bring yourself to support uh, Angel Studios, Tim Ballard, Jim Caviezel, those guys, because you disagree with their opinions. If you're here watching us, then I, I assume that you've determined that we are not offensive to your sensibilities and that you trust us. So watch our video on the story and on the subject. That's going to be coming out soon. Um, and, you know, we will we will set up a way to fundraise for, I think that one will probably be the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, nice. We'll have a fundraiser going for that. So wanted to get that out of, out of the way say it um you know i have a video on instagram right now and on tiktok as well same video that is basically explaining all of this so if you want to help raise awareness that's one thing that you can share is you can just pop that video up on your story and that way more people can be aware of it um and you know hopefully together what we can do is is build an awareness that this is going on and make it harder for the people that actually partake in this to do it in the shadows because if we can know the destinations if we can know the terminology all of that, then you'll be able to spot as it's coming up, you know, oh, wait, that's weird. You know, if there's a, a specific city that's kind of known for this and somebody keeps going there for no other conceivable reason, it might be time to look into something. Yep. You know, so uh, with, with all of that said, I think we'll go over the Super Chats now. Fair enough. Uh, first off, we got uh, Gom Ben Krajniak for $20.69. Good news, bad news. Good news is I found another Windussy at the summer camp I went to this week. Bad news is that it, uh, in a fluffy cage in my basement escaped, so there go my plans. <laughs> For a pair of lesbian Windussy bodyguards. That is a hell of a transition from topics, but I guess that's one way to pull us into the lighter side of things. That's a, that's a goal to have. All right. <laughs> Richard Henderson for four ninety nine said, "Perhaps the Windusy was the friends we made along the way." I agree. Fair enough. I think so too. When I was camping over the weekend, we heard some weird sticks breaking and also some whistling in the woods. Um, we were heavily armed. Uh, it was it was a good reason for it. Fair. There were a number of times that night where about five different, four or five men got up and were like looking around with rifles. My God. I believe it. Well, there were bears out there, too. Fair. And I'm really going to hit the bath for me. Oh, yeah, I got it. All right, sure. So, this is for Aiden number two's burrito. Enjoy. Apparently, we're getting you a burrito. Well, I think it's for birthday. Oh, okay. That yeah. might work, too. No, somebody said I was going to get you a burrito. Oh, really? So, I think it actually might be a burrito thing. Like, oh, it's possible. Yeah. All right. Hi, buddy. Want to come up and say hi during Super Chats? Come on. Come on. Come sit with me. Come, come co-host. All right. What else we got? Uh, Okay. Ben Krasniak or Gomb says, uh, part two and my plans to unalive Thomas J. Vilsack, head of the Department of Agriculture? What did the Department of Agriculture do? Um, Alfarius Omegon said, how much would you charge to watch my house for a week? I need somebody who's not afraid of my pet Wendigo because she gets cranky when not milked regularly and wrecks the place. 
you guys are going to be responsible for my death. You are. It is going to be your fault. I hope you know that. Yeah, good boy. Look at look at him. They want to see you. They're asking for it. Look at him. Oh, buddy. He's such a good boy. Um, Zero Hour said, you lads know anything fun to do in the Wilmington area? Out here for work, humid AF. If you mean Wilmington, Delaware? I have no suggestions. It's Delaware. Go shopping for, like, sales tax-free items, I suppose. Um, Sam Easton said, update on coffee. Congrats on being one of the few coffee brands that don't let their stuff sit out to the point it gets moldy. My fam could have liked it. I, I tip my hat to the also Awu. I can try and get him to do an Awu. I'll, I'll try when Aiden gets back. Um, yeah, we uh, Matt over at Tableau has been awesome. He gets that stuff done and shipped out real quick. He's he's great. Uh, let's see. Nov A42 said, Yuba County 5 video, please. It It is in the list. I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. I thought about doing it this past week, actually uh pumpkin bear seven said grimussy oh god not that um also what is your favorite way to drink your coffee and mattis have you tried coffee and chicory if so thoughts uh the grimussy thing is a reference to uh somebody wrote a fanfic about me and grimace really yep i found That's one wait i found one i think it was the one you were referring to Boopy. Uh, where it's you and I going to meet up with Isaiah. And to the hunt the Wendigo? Yeah, 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 yeah. How much of it did you read? Just the first part. Okay, I didn't even finish the first part, but I gotta say, I feel like they did a pretty good job of encapsulating actually, our personality. Pretty decent, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, you, watched, you watched the streams a lot. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> well done on that. I, also, it was interesting reading a story... About yourself that you didn't write? Not about myself that I didn't write. Also, from my, like third person or like first person yeah, the, limited perspective yeah the, yeah and it makes sense because like i was the skeptic so mm -hmm. it makes sense narratively to make mm -hmm. that but like first off well done second off i'm i, I i'll finish it because i'm yeah. curious where it goes me but, too yeah. um i thought it would be fun if we did a for like deeper lore if we did a narration of it oh that'd be entertaining yeah. as long as it doesn't get weird voice uh, acting ourselves exactly <laughs> wait what if we voice acted each other <laughs> we just tried to imitate one another too yeah 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 <laughs> Oh, oh, boy. Uh, as for my favorite way to drink the coffee, um, if uh, honestly, it's delicious black. I uh, I will typically in the morning I'll drink it black. Later in the day, I'll usually put cream and sugar in it. Um, just just you know for a little a little treat. Uh, cat, it is not milk time yet. Probably in like. Oh God! Why did you have to say minutes? milk time? It's it's you know. Uh, oh, it, God, here it, it comes. It had to happen. From now on, if you want to say milk, it has to be a super chat new rule. <laughs> You must pay to you must pay to spam milk. Um, but yeah. you must pay for the milk. Probably um, in like fifteen to twenty minutes, yeah. given how many super chats we have. Yeah. Um. All right. What else is? There? Uh. And I have not tried coffee and chicory, but yeah. Um. Also, it's really good as a cold brew. It's a really yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Really flavorful. Definitely a, a stronger flavor. Uh. I, I guess I would say more bold. Um. Also, should we give them context of what milk time is, or? Or should we just nah. leave it be questionable? We'll just, right, leave, yeah. we'll just leave it be questionable for what milk time is. <laughs> Listen, cat's coming for milk time. That's all you need to know. Uh, <laughs> also, they were wondering if Archie could uh, woo for us. Um, Archie, do you want to woo? I can probably pull up a... Do you want to uh, woo? It's probably got the wrong Not camera. Hmm. Um, let's see. Is there anything? If, if he does the uh, woo, it's not going to be caught on the mic. That's the only problem because of the filters. There we go. He's got pinions. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, what's next? Mm. Agamemnon's gym bag for five said a woman on a plane told me all lizards are masons thoughts it's really more that all masons are lizards yeah I mean, yeah you know uh i i haven't reached the right degree for my eyes to flick sideways yet i'm sorry amazing richard henderson for 1999 said here's some birthday money for thorn bussy thank you very much you birthday money Virtual Reviews for 999 said, I binged all of your 411 videos and have submitted a FOIA request to the U.S. Army in regards to the Dennis Martin case. Interesting. Let us know how that goes. Yeah, please let us know. Uh, thank you. 
uh gone been ben krasniak for 519 love it happy birthday thorn Bussy. enjoy the price of this super chat i very much did because you know what i like Thank well really you so you're much. only going to enjoy half of 70 percent of the price of that super chat yes what would that be that's 70 <laughs> percent of that is going to generally be what like a little over three yeah a little over three so that's i'll enjoy two dollars thanks there we go <laughs> it's enough for a call yeah. Uh, love how YouTube just is like, we're going to take 30% of those direct donations. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> yoink. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> uh, Hermes for $10 says, happy removal day, Milk Boy. Remo Derogative. Removal day, Milk Boy. <laughs> that is... Derogative? Is that a new case <laughs> in English? <laughs> the derogative? Thank you. Thank you. Love that. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for $5.07. Love it. He was extracted from the lake by helicopter. He was a Soviet sleeper <laughs> agent. Honestly, I love that take. Yeah, I would be curious. I think he true. would probably find that funny. Yeah, I think that'd be entertaining. He did have a girlfriend in Germany, which I found interesting considering the time. Yeah, imagine how much those phone calls cost. Mm -hmm. That's dedication. Yeah. Uh, Fandom Maniacs for $5 says, could he have slipped on the ice and hit his head hard enough to cause a concussion? That could have, uh, that could have caused confusion and he just walked off the ice? Maybe. Uh, the, tracks. the only issue there is the tracks. It feels like he, if he had slipped, his, slipped, fell, hit his head, got a concussion, then he probably would not have had the dexterity to walk back through his own tracks, which implies that it might have been on purpose is kind of the, the angle there. Yeah. HN or yeah, HND two two three for four ninety nine says Merry Birth, good sir. Thank Merry you very birth. much. Love that. Merry Beth. Yeah. Yeah. That's your mom. Mama. Uh, the White Trash Panda for two dollars and seventy cents. Love it. Merry Bidet of Birth, Thorn Boy. Thank you very much. I love all of the Thorny different boy. Thorny Boy. I love all of the different ways to say Happy Birthday that have mm -hmm. you know developed, been made out of this chat. Yeah. yeah. Hermes for five dollars and sixty nine cents. Love it. Pondering the orb is so mainstream. Ponder the milk instead. You will find great happiness. Wake up, Aiden. Don't make me wake the others. Amazing. Milk for the milk god. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, NC Squatch for ten dollars and nine cents. Love it. Weekly reminder: Milk Militia needs a tea. Also, because I don't see it praised often enough, Mr. Thornbury, you are doing a fantastic job with the editing. Thank you. I genuinely appreciate it. I do. Uh, I do put a lot of time and effort into it, and I am glad it's appreciated. He put the cold thorn bussy into it. I really do. Yeah. I really do. Uh, Fluffy Healer Ben for five pounds says, Hey, Aiden, Aiden, and chat just wanted to say good evening from southeast of England. Howdy. Uh, Briley B for five dollars says, Hey, guys, I recently discovered the channel, and this is the first live I've been able to catch. Glad to be here, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, Richard Henderson for 199 said, North Mythology is one of my favorites to read. It is good. It's good stuff. What's some good... This is actually a question I've had for you. What are some good texts or books or things like that? I mean, maybe we can put this on, like, somewhere for yeah. people to see it. But for each different type of mythology, what's a good source so people can get as accurate of information as we can? Uh, the, go into the medieval sources. Um, the prose and poetic eddas are good. Okay. Uh, Voluspa, Havamal are also interesting for understanding some of the, the stuff that goes on in Norse mythology. Okay. Um, the Welsh, you're going to want to look at the Mab Mabinogian. Um, that's one of the earlier documents we have. Oh, God. Um, what about like Greco-Roman mythology? that is you're starting to get more into like plays um Got it. but yeah i can i can put together a list i think yeah i think that'd be cool richard anderson for one oh no, no uh via notaro for five dollars says happy birthday also i don't know how you guys get any semblance of joy from old english stuff <laughs> it is terrible and the bane of my existence um i get to read it for fun and i get to make money reading it so it's kind of like it, also for me i just i find linguistics fascinating and the, the evolution of language is like cool to me hmm. um some people like trains that's me <laughs> did i go to a model train expo yesterday yes did i buy anything there no did i think about it yes yes he also <laughs> did just buy himself a 1989 ford f-350 i did and it's in great shape. I'm astonished. Yep, yeah, it, I'm shocked as well. It's uh, it's a truck that I've dreamt of since high school. And if I if I could build a truck, it's it's basically ideal. So it has no CD player, no Bluetooth. It's only cassettes and radio. And it's you can got... get a, you can get cassettes that allow you to connect your phone. I did get one, <laughs> but it's really unreliable. Ah, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, bench seats. It's great. I love it. Love it so much. Uh, thank you all for for watching our videos and allowing me to achieve my dreams. 
So uh, Ryan Whitcup for five dollars and sixty-two cents. Want to share five sixty-two ca- Kraken cash, cash with you as well as happy birthday. Thanks so much. Also, I see Mr. Mattis is not a Disney <laughs> adult. How was your Fourth of July? Not a Disney adult. Nope. My Fourth of July was spent entirely indoors working, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But I celebrated on Saturday, so uh, that's what matters. Yeah, I did the most American thing possible, which was went and shot guns and drank beer in the woods. I'm not at the same time, for the record. The beer was after the Good. guns. Good. Uh, <laughs> Good. Uh, perturbed Alpaca for $5 says, Conspiracy theory. The elites don't want you looking and thinking about trafficking because then you might think about the children born into the industry. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'm careful to use the term elites because I really do think it's, it's not relegated to just one single class of people, but you've got various tiers of this. And it's a very, the other thing you got to remember is this is a very lucrative industry. And if you think there's nobody organized profiting off of it, you're mm. crazy. Yeah. Phantom Maniacs for $10 says, movie about child trafficking media goes goes bad. Movie on Netflix about little girls dressed inappropriately yeah. dancing in ways they shouldn't in front of grown men. Media goes, yeah, empowerment. Yeah, that was rough. Rolling Stone um, had, their coverage of Sound of Freedom was, this is a QAnon conspiracy fantasy. And their coverage of Cuties was, this is a misunderstood film about coming of age. Like, <laughs> I just don't understand how. Like you, you, you're you're going to some extreme depths to call this one a QAnon conspiracy plot, and you didn't have a single shred of concern with cuties. Yeah. When they tell you who they are, listen. Like. <laughs> yeah. Rolling Stone, The Guardian. Um, you know, all, all of you. Uh, all of you should remember that. Even if you don't believe in it, there's a non-zero chance of an afterlife. <laughs> that's fair uh any heavy burn man for ten dollars says anyone who says you shouldn't watch sound of freedom and says that it's unrealistic and that trafficking isn't happening is a p word yeah uh and supports traffic yeah uh it's that's the thing is like if you've actually seen the movie it's hard to come away with the opinion that like this is political because it's not <laughs> it's it's really not a political movie if human rights is political yeah like then what kind of world are we living in yeah if, if the right to not have your kids taken and stolen and like sold off into slavery is is political then i i think maybe maybe you need to adjust your priorities yeah <laughs> uh agamemnon's gym bag for five dollars says if you oh you read this earlier yeah. you think i'm only you're naive uh since Reminder, he, he didn't kill himself he didn't no he did not no also, Ghislaine Maxwell is one of the only people in history to go to prison for uh, trafficking with mm-hmm. no clients. Interesting. Not a single named client. Interesting. Interesting. Curious, you might say. Perchance. Perchance. <laughs> you can't just say perchance. <laughs> oh my god, incredible. Senshi for $20 says, wanted to show some support. Watching the channel has led me to join my local historical society. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and I've been using my technical background to help identify some of the artifacts in their collection. That's, that's fantastic. Awesome. That is that is great work. Thank you. That's huge. That's wild. Uh, Richard Henderson for 199 says, any person who... Oh, hang on, jumped away. Uh, Redditors is always derogatory. Any person who harms a child deserves the gibbet. I don't know what the gibbet oh, is. Oh, the gibbet's the one where it's like a, a, a cylindrical like cage that they hang off the side of a wall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, definitely yeah any, anybody but anybody who harms a child or, or uh you know does anything inappropriate with a child that yeah. like is you know especially scarring yeah. uh keel hauling was pretty <laughs> was pretty solid solid punishment you know the vikings had this thing called the blood eagle maybe uh <laughs> we're not totally sure it's real but they wrote about it <laughs> if you want to know what keel hauling is uh look at what they did to blackbeard in the show black sails and then go listen to the song keel hauled by l storm just for the Viking metal, or not yeah. sorry, the pirate metal, just because, because you know, you just should. Yeah, <laughs> pirate metal goes hard. Yeah, it does. Uh, Thomas for Canadian five dollars says you are oversimplifying major parts of the issue to appeal to the broadest base. I used to make that as a three to six year old, and you are not helping. I w- I'm not sure how to. Yeah, I see that. I'm yeah. just trying to figure out how to interpret that comment. I was used. Oh, you said I used to. I was used. No, to, sorry. I, I mean, I don't know how. I don't know how telling people it's a problem is oversimplifying it. I'm planning to go into a lot more detail in the video. Um, I'm I'm horrified that that happened to you. Yeah, but seriously, that's terrible. I, I mean, if you want to tell us about your experience so that we can we can 
do a better job covering it, we'd be happy to. Yeah, take it. I, just, I don't. I don't know how I'm oversimpl. If you want to tell me how I'm oversimplifying it, great, great, go for it. I just don't. Yeah. Send us an I'm email going with the information I have right now. Yeah. If there's a better way to do it, we're happy to do yeah, it. Yeah. Like our our goal here is to spread awareness and let people know how bad this situation is. So yeah. Like I I don't mean to be rude. I'm just like I I don't I don't know what else to do. So please like the lore logic gmail the lore logic gmail dot com email us reach out. Yeah. We we'll take a look. <laughs> if we're gonna do it, we want to do it right. Yeah. Uh, K Android for twenty dollars and seventy two cents. You guys do great work in many well, ways. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Goofer Trooper, incredible name for one ninety nine. <laughs> said, "Would you do an episode on Nibblingen slash Sir Sir?" I can take a look at it for sure. It might get it depending on how much information there is. It might get rolled into like a you know general video about a, a topic. But yeah, I can look into the story. Yeah. Uh, both Tranquil Cottage Knits and Zero Hour have become members. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the new I no ads for you. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That is nice. Yeah. Uh, the new IK Beast 4472 yep. for five pounds says, you mentioned that the ice on the lake moves a lot. Could that explain the lack of tracks off the lake? Also, would you cover wild big cats in the UK? Interesting. It would explain why there were, it, it would explain why there were no tracks. It would explain why this track stopped suddenly. Mm. It would not explain how he got off the lake is the only issue is like, what, all, if if the ice moved enough to get rid of tracks going back, then it would have moved enough to get rid of the tracks going out too. So it's just mm. it doesn't make sense. Uh, Hermes for two dollars says milk. Milk. Well, at least it was a yep. super chat. Yeah. Uh, David Bucky he for took, five dollars. He, he, he followed. He followed orders. He did. Yeah. He did. Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, David Bucky for five dollars says, if you look into the Highway of Tears for a vid, you may want to look at the Jack family disappearance. Funny you mentioned that. We talked about the Highway of Tears about an hour, hour and a half ago while filming. So uh, we will be talking about the Highway of Tears a little bit. We're not mm -hmm. talking about the Jack family in this situation. Yeah. Um, but we are talking about an MMIW case next week. Um, so that's that that is involved also just a horrific i mean to give everybody a quick rundown on it the highway of tears is highway uh route 16 in canada between prince george and prince rupert but highway 16 actually also extends further east across canada through edmonton and further um on the highway of tears since 1970 approximately 80 women have gone missing um almost all of them have been indigenous and there's basically been i mean canada isn't doing anything about it like the, the I'm just going to be blunt on that one. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police do not care. Um, they're not trying. You can you can assign motive to it, or you can say that they're just apathetic and that's bad, but it's it's important to recognize that they are not doing their jobs. Like, at least the United States, under Trump, oddly enough, um, started to look into the MMIW crisis, but... And it's been continued under Biden. I don't want to make this a political thing. I'm just saying, like, that's how recent it was. Is yeah. Under Trump, this became an issue, which was, like, one of the things that he did well was fighting trafficking. Mm. Um, like, the I think uh, tra human trafficking arrests were up, like, 800% really? from, from where they were under Obama. Yeah. Wow. And, which is also about where they were under Bush and under Clinton and under, yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so it's good. In the United States, something is being done to an extent. But uh, in Canada, they're still a little bit behind. And I'm hoping that the video we're putting out next week, which is, of course, about something that happened in Edmonton, um, I'm hoping that that will help to drive some awareness of what's going on. And I'll also be linking to some resources for people who want to support when it comes to MIW. Awesome. Uh, Cakes for 999 said, as someone who lives only 25 minutes from where this dude went missing, it's disappointing to hear that he likely dis just disappeared mm -hmm. himself. I was ready to plan a quest out to the spot to do some investigating. From what I understand, he's not the only person to go missing right there. So don't necessarily don't 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 do that yet. Like don't don't give up because depending on if this other one I found is explicable, mm. then I have questions about why you might see multiple people uh like going into a fugue state in that exact spot. Interesting. Because even if it's not paranormal, it could be something like there's, you know, a weird, like, gas that comes out of the ground there. Yeah. For some reason. Um, so, you know, I just I just always... I These are the things I find interesting to talk about and look at, so... 
<laughs> Somebody did ask, what is MIW meaning MMIW? Oh, MMIW means missing and murdered in uh, missing and murdered indigenous women, and there's other variations of it. There's missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. Um, you know, missing and murdered MMIP is missing and murdered indigenous people. Um, but the the majority of the problem is centered around uh, Native American and First Nations women. Yep. Uh, zero hour for two dollars says milk. Well, thank you. Uh. Nov A forty two for five dollars says milk time 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 milk. Thank you. Love that. Gnob Ben Krasniak for ten dollars seventy four cents. Love it. The Department of Agriculture knows what it did. Nothing will happen until I get it. The statement as you know, but it gets to you from the whole finding your IP thing. Could you mail it back to me? Yeah, of course. Sure. Is it well? Is it going to be? Yeah, we'll just mail it from the P.O. Box yeah, address. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we just don't want to give anybody our address, you know? Yeah. For obvious reasons. It'll be sent by the P.O. Box. Yeah. Uh, Tranquil Cottage Knits gave us $4. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Evan Alba for five pounds says, Love what you guys do. First time catching the stream. Ever considered a video on Robin Hood slash yes. English folk? Yes. Yes, actually, it will be on History Hut. Nice. Yes, there will be a Robin Hood video. Sweet. There's going to be a Robin Hood video. There's going to be a King Arthur video. There's going to be a few other ones coming out. Um, I'm also listening to Dan Carlin's... Uh, Hardcore history on the Celtic Holocaust again, mm. which I haven't listened to since 2020, but uh, wow. it, it got me thinking about it again. I was like, man, Verkin Gedericks is one hell of a story. Kellen, the official data for $5.56 seconds, <laughs> says, I'm sorry, who was it that submitted the FOIA request about <laughs> Dennis Martin again? We just want to talk to them. We promise nothing bad will happen. I'll tell you after you retire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hermes for $5 says, ever look into Operation Dark Winter? Love to hear your thoughts. I've not heard, I've heard the name before, but I have not looked into it. Also, wait, I just, Dark Winter, I just realized, what? you know the meme about like your, your personal federal agent watching yeah. you through? It's Kellen. It's Kellen. Yeah, we have a fed. Yeah, we got one. We hope you're watching out for us. <laughs> bio, uh, code name for a senior level bioterrorist attack put. simulation conducted on June 22nd and 23rd. Designed to carry out a mock version of a covert and widespread smallpox attack on the United States. Whoa. Um, interesting. Yeah, I can look into that. Did you watch Isaiah's most recent video that he put out about oh, yeah. uh, uh, 134, or not 134, the, uh, that's the refrigerant. I was trying to put my truck. Yeah, that's it. I haven't, but I know that's what good. happened there. I know what happened there, so. yeah, but it's... Ugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's dark stuff. Yeah. Uh, Cakes for four ninety nine said, "Happy birthday, thorn, thorny friend! Here's like two do measly dollars. Thank you so much. I appreciate it." Squigs for one ninety nine said, "Have you heard of the Takria Kasut and the Takria Takria Kasut and the Isher? No, but I guess I'll also the Isherat. Also, cat now is probably about milk, milk time. I'm guessing this is what he's talking about. Uh, what else? What was the other one?" Uh, I G. <laughs> no, no, the first one. Oh, okay. Uh, T A Q R I A Q S U I T. Oh, uh, so these appear to both be Inuit. Yeah, I can look into these. Sweet. The Inuits have some cool stuff. Love that. Like the Adlet. That's the uh the dog man. Oh, nice. That also like the uh story is that the dog headed ones they sent west and the pale skin ones they sent east and they became the Europeans. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh the white trash pan why there is. Jump? uh white trash panda for two dollars and one cent thank you uh thrombosa you have the same birthday as my mother so why aren't you calling him mommy then shocking it's because i am your mother <laughs> yeah he borths you bed by 10 happy broth day <laughs> uh ethan rothwell for five dollars says i bought recently or i i recently bought, bought land, land bordering daniel boone kentucky as a New York Long Islander, is there anything I should be aware of in that area, spooky or otherwise? Uh, <laughs> bootleggers? <laughs> Moonshiners? Moonshiners. Do we have a milk preference, by the way? Do we have a milk preference? A uh, whole is usually the preference, I suppose. Okay, whole. Yeah, I like whole. Fan of the whole milks. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kentucky, depending on if you're near Appalachia, that's when you start to get, you start looking at like, you know, the wild men stuff that you hear about down in Tennessee, Kentucky, those regions of people who uh, live out in the trees and are either Bigfoot or just feral people. So that's one of the ones that I hear a lot, but also moonshiners. Um, you know, don't go wandering into the woods on private property because you might come across a still and you don't want to do that. Yep. Um, uh, just, you know, don't, just, just mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> it's, a, it's a smart move. In, in mind your business in the woods. 
Uh, Alfarius Omegon, incredible name for five dollars, says, "So is that a no on the house watching slash Wendigo milking? <laughs> just think of it as like an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere that's paying you." I, I just feel like it's in my best interest to not house sit near the Wendigo. No, no yeah, I think that's accurate. Your least favorite YouTube channel for $2 says, are millstones and fairy stones different? I can be honest, that's one that I cannot answer off the top of my head. I'm going to have to look into that. Fair. Agamemnon's gym bag for $20.69. Oh nice. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on the NH, is that New Hampshire? New Hampshire liber yeah. libertarian saying the... The Uyghur genocide is a lot is a fake. Uh, yeah, um, I, I would describe the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire as... Uh, deeply unhelpful would be the way that i would describe them um i have said this privately personally to the chair of the libertarian party the, uh huh yeah i have i have directly said that i i can confirm that this is a conversation that happened like yes. like the like like the chair of the libertarian party i said to her Hey, Angela, I really feel like the New Hampshire chapter is kind of causing problems because all they do <laughs> is go on Twitter and basically deny that, d deny genocides. And yeah. I'm sure that you and I can both see where this is going, right? Yeah. And they, they, they said something about like six gorillion. Like, I, they just, it's just, like, I don't use the term anti Semitic dog whistle, whistle all that much. Also, by the way, just to be clear, this is my own party. This is the party I am registered to. Yeah. Um, so this is not me criticizing other people's politics. This is me criticizing people within my own camp. Yeah. Um, all they do is just shitpost. And it's like, it's one thing if you're just doing that. Yeah. It's another thing if you're the official Twitter account for a political party. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think I tweeted out the other day, like, uh, it was something along the same line. It was the same level of stupid where I tweeted and I was like, you know this entire account is just bad takes like oh my god it's i mean i know i know a lot of new hampshire libertarians they're almost exclusively really nice people but the people in charge up there are dumb like they are they are new hampshire is kind of a little libertarian like you know sanctuary right they have forgotten that the rest of the country is not a little libertarian sanctuary that understands your culture mm. so you can't just constantly be memeing on the internet and then all the other chapters of the Libertarian Party across the country have to cover for you. Yeah. And be like, we're sorry. He's like, you know, that's New Hampshire. He's a little... Like, you know. <laughs> like, just shut up, guys. Yeah. Just shut up. Just all you need to do is be an example of libertarianism working in New Hampshire. That is all you need to do. Everything else you need to do is not talk. Because everything you say is stupid. Rant over. Don't send memes. Show the results. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Pumpkin Bear 7 for $10. Thank you very much. It says, can you do a voice on half human, half snake, or video on half human, half snake cryptids? If I remember correctly, there are stories about them by the native yeah. South Americans in the Amazon and Africa. Yeah, I can I can do some on that. There's uh there's also the the Naga of uh like Indian mm. folklore. Yeah, yeah, I can do a video on snake people. Steve Lyons for two dollars says happy bidet, Aiden. Thank you so much. Uh Senshi for eleven dollars forty nine cents. Love it. Uh continuing my previous chat, we also found the exact location of the gas station at Greenwood Furnace. The park has an untold history of trafficking, uh, sex trafficking in the 30s. In the 30s, Jeez. if you want more local stories. Good lord. What was the what was the previous chat? Uh, it's... Uh, trying to find it. I can't... Oh, uh, uh, that's not it. Oh, well, that's... That's that's the same chat. That's the same account, but yeah. it doesn't. Make... Was it a previous chat that wasn't a super chat? Yeah. Was it not a super chat? Because I'm not seeing a super chat. That's or maybe it has to. Because what was the last thing you said? Um. Okay, far back. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, continue previously we spent. Oh yeah, we found the exact location of the guest so because he's doing work at the historical society. Right. So. Got it. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're referring back to. Okay. Got it. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Amber Zamba for, is that Australian? Seven ninety nine, I think. I thought A U S was Australian. Oh yeah, it is. I don't know what that is then. Let us know what that is. What is A? A A. I don't know. Uh, what currency is A? It's 
that's USD. Uh, this is um, this is not helpful. I'm trying to find it. All right, I don't know. Yep, I give up. Yeah, let us know because I'm don't. curious what that is now. <laughs> uh, bless you for the sneeze and happy birthday, Thornbussy. Oh, we, we could have just read it. She says hi from Australia. Mm. Never mind. Good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, have we you are looked... smart adult men. Then why does that say A and some of them say A U? Anyway, have you looked in any strange Australian disappearances? I uh, no, but from what I understand, there are some missing 401 style disappearances in Australia to look through. So I, I, if you if you gave me a name, I could I could look in. Also, thank you for the happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, we are geese. Uh, NC Squatch for two dollars says anything on the myths of the Catawba? Not off the top of my head, but it's it's also getting looked up. So, Catawba. I assume that's another Native American. Seems like it. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'll uh, I can look into it and see if they got anything interesting to talk about. Cool. Oh man, that's a small group. That's kind of cool though. Uh, Gnob for or Ben Krajanek for two dollars says, "Could you explain to me what?" Oh no, not bad. Should I say it? Mpreg, um, on Twitch, uh, they they had they sent me a uh, a video explaining all of the different fandom terminology. Mm -hmm. What do you think Mpreg would be in a fanfic? Male pregnancy. pregnancy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pregante. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Party like 1776 for $17.76. Love it. Appropriate. Uh, hey, y'all, just a, what did I miss? Also, happy so 21st much. to myself. I can finally get the fun toys now. God bless America. Woo! Happy birthday to happy you. Happy birthday. Um, I would just rewind, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would rewind. Yeah. <laughs> You're just, it's This one went in a few different directions. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot. Yeah. Uh, Hermes for five dollars says, "At this point, I should just get a membership." Yeah. Uh, six six members of Tyrannus Tyrannus milk milk Amazing. Good lord, I hate, I hate that that phrase has is, uh, I mean, for good reason is associated with the Confederacy because mm -hmm. Six Semper Tyrannus on its own just sounds awesome. What does it translate? Thus, to? always to tyrants. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so it's just like it, it's one of those things that you're like oh, why is this got to be associated with bad people because it's kind of goes hard like you know yeah agamemnon's gym bag for five dollars says at the risk of becoming a pariah jerky is better than milk well i feel like jerky and milk are just different things correct like if you were like i mean if if you if you said like soda is better than milk at least then you're comparing beverages yeah, I mean, I will say of the two, I do prefer jerky, because I'm not generally a, a milk hmm. guy. Jerky does last longer. It's true. Like in a in a pinch, like in a, an apocalyptic situation, you're gonna yeah. prefer jerky. Yes. But milk's also an important nutrient. No, yeah, I mean, you know, to each their own, I suppose. Yeah. Different. Say that. <laughs> no, I've been. Why are you gonna do this? <laughs> what? No, Ben Grasniak for five dollars says, "Thank you." Now, do you know what oncest? No, no, and I, you know what? And I don't care to. Yeah, I'd rather. Not. I think my life is better with me not knowing what that term means. Ignorance at times is bliss. Is bliss. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, somebody did give us. Uh, I live in Australia, and my mom told me that one of her friend's husbands disappeared in the bush when they were camping. She was making dinner for the night, and he was collecting wood, and essentially he was just never seen again. Disappeared well, into the bush and hasn't been found in 30 years. Australia is scary. That's the thing with Australia is, like, it's not even the cryptids you got to worry about in Australia. No, everything wants to kill you except the wombats and the koalas. But the koalas would also give you gonorrhea, so... What, what do people do with the koalas? Good point. Like, the koalas have gonorrhea was my point. Okay. Like... Which apparently is becoming uh, drug resistant. Great. Yeah. Well, at least Australia has wombats. Yes. Which are just nice. We have a wombat. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. He's a mod. Wombats are great. <laughs> we have a mod. 
<laughs> Hermes for five dollars says, "I did not know that was tied to the Confederacy." <laughs> You're fine. Your Honor, I plead oopsie daisy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Please, the oopsie daisy. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't Incredible. assume that you that you were using it in the like John Wilkes Booth sense, but more just that like it's the it's a good anti like authoritarianism phrase. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's happened to a, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of uh, a lot of bad groups keep taking cool stuff. Yeah, like, like no, no military can wear Hugo Boss anymore. Exactly. Why'd you have to do that? I think that was one of the lesser of their evils, to be honest. It was. Yeah. It was probably one of the smallest things that could yeah. possibly be associated true, true. with them. Yeah. Um, the Nazis are bad, okay? <laughs> Very like... bad. <laughs> it's like, there was... <laughs> Deplorable, some might say. <laughs> there was, there's, you can draw a line during World War II, and everybody to the west of that line is the good guys, and everybody to the east of that line is the bad guys. It's actually quite simple. Yeah. <laughs> like... It's not really a straight line. It's a weird line, but um, we're talking governments here. Yeah, um, because you know it's the. <laughs> I love how like you go east of France and it's like hmm, hmm. Yeah, these these are all bad policies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like if you go directly east of France, you find people who committed genocide against the Jews. If you go east of those people, you find yet another group of people who committed genocide against the Jews. <laughs> like it just doesn't stop. Uh, I can't get a break. <laughs> No, they cannot. <laughs> like, uh, I, one of my favorite things about, like, the the history, the, like, biblical history is you finally get, like, an actual Jewish kingdom around, like, 1050 BC, and it lasts, <laughs> lasts like, 400 years. Like, <laughs> because just, it's in such, such a inopportune location. Yeah. Like, polit geopolitically, like... Brutal. You're surrounded by three different empires. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a good place to Consistently be. Consistently throughout history. There's always an empire in Egypt. There's always an empire in Turkey. And there's always an empire in Persia. You're in the worst possible location. Brutal. Uh, uh, not being Krajniak for $2. Says, better question. Biggest animal you could fight? Like, biggest animal that I would have a chance against or biggest animal that I would, like, beat? Both. I could take a goat. I think a goat I could definitely beat. Is it a fist fight or a... I'm going to say fist fight. If it's a it's fist fight, I think a goat I could take. Yeah? I think it's about the biggest I would go, re like, that I could definitely With win. or without horns? With horns, I think, makes it easier. You just grab them. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, a little bit of agility involved. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, I, the goat clearly has his strength buffed. I have to buff my intelligence. Yeah. That's where I win. I feel like, I feel like there's a sweet spot. Because too small... I remember on gym bag, I was talking about the Soviets. <laughs> Um, mm. To really quickly address that, yeah, he said, did the Polish genocide the Jews? My ignorant. Actually, the Pol it happened in Poland, but the Poles yeah. weren't responsible. Yeah, no, that wasn't their fault. They were kind of, you know, also going through it. <laughs> Not quite to the same extent, but... Yeah, they didn't have a good time either. Yeah, jeez, it was, uh, Jews, Gypsies, Poles, um, Freemasons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholics. A lot of people. Yeah. Bad time. Bad time all around. Yeah, not not good times. Um, but with that said, it is getting close to eight thirty, so we should probably take Kellen's yep. uh, super uh, chat. Uh, and yes, done. I also need to retrieve the okay. All right, the then milk. we'll end the show now. Yeah. Um, so do you want to say goodbye to the people? Yes. Adios, Pipel. Okay. Uh, there we go. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes. We really appreciate it, uh, or I really appreciate it. I guess you. Will I appreciate it too. Do yeah. I, you know, You'll appreciate it more come no, no but probably yeah. But you know. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you everybody, and I will see you next week. And okay, yeah. Uh, Kellen said for five five six, Mattis, I'm going to hit you up on Instagram. It will make sense when you read the message. Thank you, and to, uh, to everybody who hung out tonight, thank you for hanging. Um, good numbers, good chat, good conversations, and uh, you know, I I am hoping you guys all liked the video we put out on Friday, and I hope you guys like the one that comes out on Sunday. Uh, if you want to support us, you guys know how to do it. You can find us on Patreon, or you can come member here. You can also buy our coffee, or you can go to the lorelodge.shop and buy some some nice clothes that we've made. And uh, with that said, you know I appreciate all of you, and we will see you next time.